Hello, uh, welcome to my latest video. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, still life again. I haven't done one for a while, but uh, next time I will be back to the landscape. So if that's your favorite, you won't have to wait too long. Uh, so I won't waste any more of your time. On to the video. And uh, if you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps channels so much. Thank you. Right, uh, first task is to cover up all the white. It, um, you don't need to do this in any great accuracy. It's just uh, when you come to put the real colours on, it gives you a much better idea of um, if you've got them right or not. Because when you put a colour on white, it always looks a lot darker than it really is. Plus it has the benefit of of if you leave a little slither unpainted you don't get the white you do you get a, a color that's very close so it goes unnoticed now i'm um starting the painting for real and it's a simple matter of checking my colors very closely with the reference photo and just putting them in their place not unlike uh, paint by numbers but without the the, the pre-drawn borders for this uh, tankard I have decided to try and um, complete it as I go Pewter has a, a very strong blue cast to it, and um, but it does uh, reflect its environment quite accurately. So on the right hand side, there's um, <coughs> a, the light source is uh, being reflected, and on the left, it's just picking up the green of the hops. All the while I'm doing this, I'm paying close attention to the reference photo. I keep flicking my eyes between the two to see if anything jumps out. If, it, if something jumps when you flick your eyes to your painting, that means there's something different. So try and work out what it is and fix it. This tankard is quite a battle worn, so there's lots of dings and dents and lots of pitting I will try and uh, indicate that the pewter starts to come alive when you put the highlights on that is a characteristic of pewter it has very strong highlights The spots there are the uh, damage. I'm keeping the background very sort of patchy just to break up the monotony of the sort of single colour.
the tankard is actually sitting on a piece of slate but uh, I'm not going to accurately paint that just a slight indication and put in all the detail in the main focus of the subject that being the tankard itself and the hops again the process is relatively simple decide on a part of the photograph you're going to paint and uh, mix your colors check it on the photograph that you got them accurate and just place them in in the picture I'm getting these hops to probably 80 90 percent finished as I as I move along I will do the final 10% uh, all together at the end when I can uh, assess the colours I've used. I noticed there that um, <coughs> I had uh, missing parts of the background so I tried to put them in but uh, I put them in on wet paint so they've gone too green I'll have to fix that when, when this is dried Right in the middle there is is one of the leaves which are a, a much bluer green than the hops themselves. starts to come alive when to, when I put the the darkest darks in there
Here's my sort of very rough indication of the slate base. I'm not going to go any further than this. Now what I've done here is uh, mixed up some liquid with a, a very small amount of dark pigment and um, I'm using that to uh, push the the darker edges f further away but still retaining the the underpainting. And uh, there we have it. I hope you enjoyed it.